Great. Well, we'd like to welcome everyone to the My Horse University and eExtension Horse Quest live webcast on tips for staying safe on the roads and trails. The presenter for this evening is Dr. Betsy Green. Dr. Green is an Associate Professor of Animal Science and the Extension Equine Specialist in the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences at the University of Vermont. She was raised in Bedford, Massachusetts and received her bachelor's degree from Moorhead State University, her master's from the University of Arizona, and her PhD from Kansas State University. And she earned the American Registry of Professional Animal Scientists certification in 1997. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Green. Okay, well, I'm glad to be here and chat with all of you folks and hear about some things that you've experienced and talk about some things to have everybody have a better chance of having a safe and productive summer. Uh, wonderful weather up here in Vermont. Of course, I'm in the middle of nowhere, but it be a beautiful place to be on a horse. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I want to do is uh, get you guys to do a little bit of active work here. This is a challenge. Trail terror time. In the chat box, take just a minute, jot down some brief topics of some of the personal trail nightmares that you've experienced, whether you've seen them, been involved, or been unfortunately the one in the middle of it. So take a chance, take a minute, and let's just see what kind of things we have coming up, and hopefully we'll be covering a lot of these things. Chris, you going to start us out there? Caroline's typing. I know I could type a few. I'll talk about those as they go along. Okay, so Gwen, you're going to have to help and make sure that I, I, are you seeing anything at this point or are people still typing? There we go. Okay. Um, people, I, I see it now. Okay, great. I just want to make sure we didn't lose our chat box again. <laughs> All right, so as they come in, I'll just be reading. You guys can keep typing. So other riders who have no concern for their peers on the trail. Ditches, loose dogs, donkeys over a fence, really scary. Of course, hogs and geese are also those fall within that. People on bicycles who are also using the trail. We'll talk a little bit about multi-trail. Not wanting to go over, in, or through water. So it looks like we need a flat paved trail, right? <laughs> okay, I see some other folks typing. Speeding cars, absolutely problem. <clears throat> so we have ditches, cars, lo loose dogs, water, cars that honk while they go by you. Yes, that's very helpful, isn't it, Gwen? Horse running full steam ahead while hitched up on a trail, probably scared from the wheels going over crunchy autumn leaves. <laughs> trail driving. <laughs> that can be a big wreck for the horse running and a bigger wreck for the folks that are collateral damage. Riding partner took off at a gallop without warning you. One way up and nowhere to turn around in the canyon. That can be a challenge. Okay, so you guys have had some fun experiences. <laughs> All right, who else? We got another coming in. Okay, bears. Yeah, we have some of those up in Vermont, too. <laughs> Quite a few. Okay, so as we go through this, uh, this will be something that I think a lot of you folks will have known. It sounds like many of you have already been on trails and done some maybe competitive maybe recreational riding but a lot of these things come up and there are some things that you can do to be better prepared as you go out there and some of these are things that you do at home some of these are courtesies and some of these are education as well <clears throat> 
But we'll start with just some common trail issues. We'll talk about horse safety on the road, which can be a very, very serious danger. Then we'll go through 10 tips for safety, and this is more the horses and riders fact factor, and have some discussions and questions and go from there. All right, so we talked about some common trail issues. And first thing is, nowadays, we don't have nearly as much uh, area to go out and ride our horses and be away from everything else. We have a lot more urban and suburban area. And often, many riders have to get on the road to get to trails. And that's just one of those really very difficult things. Uh, cars versus horses. In most states, the legislature, the rules, the laws that favor the horses or the animal over the car because the horse is more unpredictable. In Vermont, there is a law that says horses have the right of way. But do you really think that stops horses, cars from speeding by or honking or those some of those other things that you said? And one of the things that I, I worked with uh, Vermont Horse Council, Vermont Farm Bureau, and um, myself from UVM Extension to actually film a little PSA or public service announcement. And I think, Gwen, do you want to play that for us? With more than 9 million horses in the U.S., it's very likely you'll meet one on the road. Be alert and be cautious. Horses react unpredictably, so look to the rider for guidance, follow arm signals, and keep your cool. Motorists should slow down and pass wide around the horse. Riders stay in single file on the right-hand side of the road. Drivers don't honk the horn or rev the engine. Mutual respect may save a life. Brought to you by the Vermont Horse Council, Vermont Farm Bureau, and University of Vermont Extension. Now, I want you to take a minute, and I'm going to ask Gwen to play that again in a minute, but jot down in the chat box if there was anything wrong with the scenario there. W were there things that those trail riders could have improved? Anyone have any ideas? Maybe go ahead and play it one time. I see Janice is typing. Okay, spread out more, absolutely. That's actually the key issue right there. Um, and why do you suppose they were so close? Well, because we were filming it so that <laughs> we could show the, um, show the horses and the car, truck all together. And so that's, that was the one problem with that. But so one of the things, yeah, go ahead and play that. It's 30 seconds, just go ahead and play that one more time. With more than 9 million horses in the U.S., it's very likely you'll meet one on the road. Be alert and be cautious. Horses react unpredictably, so look to the rider for guidance, follow arm signals, and keep your cool. Motorists should slow down and pass wide around the horse. Riders stay in single file on the right-hand side of the road. Drivers don't honk the horn or rev the engine. Mutual respect may save a life. Brought to you by the Vermont Horse Council, Vermont Farm Bureau, and University of Vermont Extension. Okay, and Debbie has written something about visibility. Okay, so perhaps they should have had some reflective gear on. Is that, if that's what you're talking about, otherwise describe a little bit more. But <clears throat> when we were trying to plan this uh, public service announcement, you know, this is the, the kind of thing where they play this for free. Sometimes you don't always have the um, time, you know, it, they play it, they play a certain amount of, PSAs um, during the day that's part of the requirements for television broadcasting and so sometimes this would play at 3 in the morning but our, our actually our channel 3 our Vermont's channel uh, main channel played it quite a bit come spring and they're still playing it and this was um, gosh it's been out I think two years now and it's something that is actually available if you have something in the state where you are you have you can get um, the contacts for the P 
PSA, folks, for your local TV channels, and we can actually send that to them to ha use it in your state. Because the horse people wanted to say, okay, tell the cars how to act, and that's it. Tell them. Tell them what they have to do, what they can't do, and all that. Well, the point is mutual respect may save a life. And the key is while we need to tell the cars what they can and couldn't do, uh, we also need to tell the horse people that they need to be actively in control of themselves and their horses. They also need to communicate the best that they can because a lot of times it's ignorance. Um, you know, people think, well, if I get by them fast, it'll be better. And they don't realize that spooks the horse into the ditch, dislodges the rider, whatever. Or they honk to let you know they're there. Or sometimes they're honking just because they're being jerks. And that one you can't necessarily fix. But um, you have to be prepared. And so one of the key things here is that you have to try and do everything that you can to get your horse used to these situations in a as much of a controlled manner as you possibly can. So that might mean having, like that was Ken, Ken driving his truck and he was at the time the president of Vermont Horse Council. And, and of course he wasn't honking at the horses when we were filming, but that was cut into that. And so just things like that, taking a you know, horses that are experienced out with inexperienced horses, getting them used to all these different types of situations, as many as you can before you go on the, quote, big trail ride. Just as if you're going to a show, you don't start load, trying to teach your horse to load that morning. You, you work on getting your horse into the trailer and being familiar with, or being calm in unfamiliar places. Same exact type of thing. Now, so on the road, use your hand signals don't be two or three abreast because then you're just asking to irritate the drivers who may or may not realize how fragile your control of your animal may be um, you know if a deer come is or something is coming from the other side they don't have any idea that the horse might spook into the car or just even a change in the footing so be sensible yourself so that you can actually try and guide the folks that are willing to take guidance. Because you may have the law on your side, but if you or your horse is hit and injured or killed, winning doesn't really make it any better. Okay, so that's the key thing for road travel. Now, when you're out on the multi-use trails, okay, somebody mentioned that earlier. Again, sometimes you have different levels of knowledge and you also have levels of cooperation and willingness to try and work with you. I know that bicycles, a lot of times there's bicyclists that are just really want to make it things great. So what do they do? They stop and they step off the trail with their bike and they're quiet. And what does that end up doing? it usually spooks the horse more than if they had stayed on the trail. And so that's where they're actually trying to help, but they don't know what's happening. So you have to say, hey there, Mr. Bicyclist, I appreciate you stopping. Could you please speak so that my horse knows that you're not a bear or, or something else or a deer or whatever? And communicating. They, they don't always know that silence can be scarier than than voices. And ATVs, you know, certainly those are types of things that depending on where you're riding, you need to be aware of what else might be on the trail. And that, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of folks on ATVs that stop and turn off their engine and are very polite and they're trying to help. I've also seen folks that are just rip-roaring through the woods without regard to what they might be coming upon. So always watch out for yourself and your horse, but also communicate because often they're not intending to do evil things to you. <laughs> okay, in Vermont we have snowmobiles and you know people say, oh, those snowmobiles are horrible. It's like, well, wait a minute. Do you realize that snowmobiles actually build really good trails? 
and they have a lot of trails throughout the state and those trails are excellent things that are not used by the snowmobiles in the summer fall or spring so what if you were to partner because the only thing that you'd really need to work on is the bridges because they don't necessarily need a solid bridge and you could actually have more access to trails so food for thought on things like partnerships partnerships can allow you to actually help folks understand what you need and what they need for a safer ride and the same thing goes with joggers and hikers sometimes the uh, folks that are trying to help end up just being quiet and you need to tell them it's okay to speak and please speak so we have a couple is there anything else on those things that you've met on the trail have you guys had some uh, good or bad experiences just kind of jot jot that down in the in the chat box if you get a chance um, the next type thing that I want to address I worked with Ben Wallace at my everything equine event in the end of April he came to do some horsemanship work and doing some preparing for riding in groups and things like that and we worked together on presenting top 10 tips for trail riders and so I wanted to give him credit for that as well because he was a key in putting this stuff together okay so <laughs> Chris had a great experience she got engaged in a trail ride in New Mexico <laughs> All right, and I hope you knew him before you got engaged or was it really just an awesome trail ride? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> so, okay, so the first thing, and this is more horse and rider. So when you're out on the trail, or even before you get out on the trail, make sure that your horse is thinking and that you have his or her attention. So whether you're in the arena, the trail, when you have them paying attention to you, you're going to have a better chance. This mule, Jazzy, that I was actually riding, um, do you think she has her attention on me? We were actually out there to round up horses so or cattle, so it was actually fun and no big deal. But when you're trying to um, get your horse to move, or mule in this case, to move on a trail and behave, you definitely need to have <clears throat> ways to get them to be thinking and get their attention back to you and so it might be even getting some groundwork getting some warm-up in the arena or doing other things that will get their attention to you and don't wait till you're out on the trail to try and do that because you need to get the the handle on your horse before you get into situations so even things like working with horses and in other horses and working with obstacles and objects and changing positions and riding these horses are doing an exercise to try and establish and this was Ben Wallace's picture with some of the youth he was working with to try and get them in safe situations so this is closer than you want on a trail but the exercise is to establish horses tolerance horses moving when you're asking them to uh, following direction things like that and if you actually went if you look at some of the things that David O'Connor when he's training horses for uh, eventing and it was always great I thought he did a great job because he always did stuff that seem like you know as the rider like oh I don't want to do that that's going to cause the horse to spook and he's like well it's much better to get him spook and get him over it now instead of be surprised in the middle of a cross-country course and his his wife Karen O'Connor was uh, they were doing a clinic at the equine affair in Massachusetts and there was a gray horse that was just terrified of the audience and it was a big coliseum and of course every lots of people there to see him so the rider was clearly nervous and it was a uh, not a great safe situation so Karen said here can I hop on your horse and she told the audience okay let's start this 
I want you guys to clap when I'm away from the rail, because the horse would not go to the rail because the audience was very scary. And when the horse would go to the rail, the clapping would stop. So she actually worked the audience to work the horse through this issue. And, and you know, of course, she's extremely competent and accomplished rider, but it was just a really good way to say, huh, let's challenge them now rather than try and be surprised. And so when you talked about the logs and the water and the things like that, you can have tarps, you can have water, you can put logs, you can have the raincoats, anything that you might find, the garbage can, you know, the deadly garbage can, all those things. Do that stuff at home first. Don't let the trail be the first time they see it. Also, bikers and hikers and things like that. And, and dogs, you said loose dogs. But most of the general public doesn't have the experience with the horses, so you have to make sure that your horse is properly prepared. And, of course, things can go from good to bad in a second, but if you put the foundation on your horse at home, before you're in that situation, you have a much better chance of having your horse's confidence and your confidence get you out of it a little bit better. So hopefully you don't come across these obstacles on your trail, but they could be pretty scary. If you're riding down in Florida, you may find something like that, right? Um, or if you're riding in San Diego. <laughs> so, all right. Whether you are in an arena or on the trail, you should expect the same behavior. This is one of those things where you have folks that say, well, they're great in the arena, but they don't take them out of the arena, or they say, but they act up on the trail. And the more you work and, and get the horse exposed out and get you gain some confidence too, the, the better situation you'll have. If your horse knows to turn and stop and steer and go in the arena, there's no reason that they shouldn't know those things outside. And has anybody had the experience where they have the, you kind of look back and you realize that you can kind of cause the scare? How many people have been riding up and said, oh my gosh, that horse is going to spook, my horse is going to spook at that trash can. He always does. Anybody? I remember riding riding a gray mare that had, I was riding a lesson in an indoor, and yes, they read the minds, yes they do, they read the body for sure, and that horse just riding around, no big deal, everywhere, everything's the same, except for today, a, a lovely father brought his two young children and stroller and just popped up at the end. I mean, all he was doing was walking. He didn't know what he was doing, but popped at the end of the arena and it scared both of us that first time. And then, of course, what do you think? Every time I knew that she was going to spook, so she did. Well, the instructor was saying, all right, ride past. When you get to the corner, look past the window and just keep riding. Well, when I stopped reacting or expecting that baby carriage there, suddenly she was much better as well. And so, same type of thing. When you tense up, that horse says, gosh, if they're scared, I'd better be scared too. <laughs> okay? So, but if you, if you think about it, when, when we change the way we act and react, then they can read this. And sometimes when they're we're expecting them to act up, act up, they can actually, we can actually create that bad behavior, which I was as well. And so just thinking about doing the same types of things you do in the arena, whether that's a shoulder in or a asking for a serpentine or whatever the case, do these things outside as well. So we have on the trail with this new herd, I just need to remind my horse that I am his herd leader. Well, you, so if you're riding with different horses, you have to be aware of their actions, and we'll get into that in a minute. But you also need to remind yourself to be the same as you are, the leader that you are in the arena. The same, 
and be that leader outside of the arena as well. I, I think it may be saying the same thing, but a lot of times we expect a different behavior so we get it, and that's not always a good thing. Okay, so know your horse. Do your best to know the other horses riding with you. Okay, be honest about this. If your horse doesn't get along well with other horses, keep more of a distance from the group. If your horse needs to be warmed up, even if no one else does or is, warm your horse up. Wishing or hoping for good behavior will usually lead to trouble. And so the same goes for the horses you're riding with. And so if you have some folks that have some difficult horses and you're, you know, sometimes it's just better to find a group of horses that work well and are at the same level or if your horse is inexperienced you have some horses that have great experience and riders who have patience okay maintain a safe distance following horses and if you look here this is out in Arizona again in a wash and if you look through those ears you can just barely see that horse's hocks that's pretty much the minimum distance that you should have. If you can see the hocks of the horse in front of you through the ears, that's minimum. You really want to see the heels as well. And so you want to keep at least a horse's length. And, you know, the next thing, you, you know, leave even more distance between the horses if there's an unfriendly horse. Your horse should be able to work with and independently of the group. And this is something you have to do, you practice. And how many people have said, okay, the horse, I, he just goes nuts when I try to get away from the group. You need to work at this at home first and give them a chance to get away from the horse and then, or the other horses, and then practice coming back. And sometimes in the arena, instructors will have horses in a line and have the first horse ride to the end of the line. This is the first beginnings of one, one way to get that to to happen and build on this and work on this stuff at home before you get into a situation because you may have to go do something or or have a horse be alone and of course they're herd animals they want to be together but um, definitely work on these things ahead of time now if someone's struggling with his or her her horse do your best be to be a good citizen. Sometimes that good citizen is just a matter of waiting for them or being by them and being calm. And, you know, sometimes pe people panic because they're thinking they're causing trouble or, oh no, my horse is acting up. And then it just kind of escalates into the horse is now nervous because the per rider's nervous. Calming, understanding, patience, that's going to be the best situation and if you practice that hopefully folks will practice with you now this was just my friend in California riding her advanced dressage horse and I was riding her Morgan and so she was just taking a picture but you know, I, I wasn't struggling at that point anyway okay and then pay attention to and try to read any of the signs of the horses your horse and the other horses may be giving. Sometimes these things are, are you know, have warnings that people don't pay attention to. They usually let you know what they're about to do before they make that big move. Walk, watch for pinned ears, head gestures, swishing tails from your horse or from the others, and pay attention and deal with them. Or if you notice something else going on with another horse, just point it out to the rider as well. Always try to remain calm and patient, you know, the deep breathing and just even you say relax. Sometimes you're mind over matter. You're saying Zen. Everything is fine when inside you're saying, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Deep breath because being nervous is not going to help it. You usually just will amplify whatever's happening. And so getting excited excited, reactive, angry, or frustrated won't help solve anything. Do your best to keep calm, be patient with your horse, the rider, you know, you yourself or other riders or other horses, and try and think of solutions instead of just being concerned about 
what somebody is or isn't doing. Try and be a part of the solution rather than adding to the problem because that's just looking for some more issues. And of course, <laughs> if you're not enjoying yourself, then it's really not um, not going to be a good time for you or anyone else. And if you find it stressful or difficult, then you know find some folks that are at you know willing to work with you and get you through some of the challenging parts of riding on the trail and on the road and go out there with a little bit more confidence and you just really have an enjoyable time because it really is a great, great opportunity. Um, what are some other tips that you, oh, there's the, <laughs> the big view of jazz. The first time I rode a mule, actually, and it was quite fun. Um, other great tips that you guys have that you found work out on the trail. <clears throat> Anyone have some things to talk about? And that's my little princess dog, Greta, the Jack Russell terrorist. Don't console a scared horse. Okay, so basically saying, rather than saying, yes, you're great to be afraid, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> Is that what you're talking about there, Chris? Just kind of work through and work past the scared issue? Okay, I see some folks typing as well, so we'll, yes, show them confidence, and yes, and you have confidence as well. Bomb-proof, using empty water bottles, bubble wraps, tarps, fans with streamers, absolutely, and it's much better to see this type of stuff first before you're out in the middle of nowhere. You know, something else as you guys keep typing, we had, out, when I was out at Washington State, we had a great set of trail riders, and there was a guy, Charlie and his wife, Gwen, who just wonderful, and they, when they went on a trail ride, though, boy, oh boy, you better be ready to ride, because you usually <laughs> didn't get back before dark, and it was great. You kind of got off and had to get your feet back under you, but... It kind of one time they decided that they were getting a little bit older and they wanted to try a smoother ride. So they bought some walking horses. And they were wonderful, flat-shod walking horses. But boy, those horses could just glide and stride. And they had great long walking stride. And most of the other horses were quarter horses. So suddenly the rest of the folks were having to trot or, or jog or canter. And, you know, we were all, the horses were all tired because just the change in the, then Charlie usually led the rides. So you have to be aware of the group that you're riding with. Ride with levels that are appropriate or folks that are tolerant of whatever level you're riding. Okay, so we have, as a leader, ride to the least capable rider horse. Excellent, excellent point. Excellent point. Because and and if you're a person that's just learning the trail, don't try and go out on the overzealous, you know, full day, day trail ride. Find some folks that'll get you and your horse used to this type of thing. Okay, don't assume just because a horse is older or more experienced, no matter ha what happens, they'll always cooperate and never spook. Yes, that's true. It's every horse has its day. Every rider has its day. And... Definitely, you always need to understand that when you think about horses, their training, their herd animal mentality uh, that's ingrained, that's like their hard drive. The software is the training. Well, if if the something happens unexpected, a deer or a bicyclist or whatever, sometimes that software crashes and they're going to go back to their original instincts and fight or flight and then kind of say, oh, oops, sorry. <laughs> so absolutely good points. What else? So if you have groups of horses, if you're taking folks out on trail rides, things like a leader, most experienced leader in the front, an experienced rider in the back, and, you know, 
than the folks in the middle. As as somebody said in the chat box, keeping the um, level of the ride down to the level of the lowest rider as far as training or ho horse or rider. Um, what else? Gradually introducing them to traffic. Don't tailgating, tailgate horses. Um, let's see. Taking, taking turns being the leader. Those, that's also good for um, all the horses and riders, okay? Avoid traffic whenever possible, okay? It is too unpredictable. And if your horse is the lead mare in the paddock, where should she be positioned out on the trail? Pack or trail pack, front, middle, or rear? A lot of times that depends on the other group of horses and the level of riders as well. Um, if she's the lead horse in the pack at home and you're with that pack, <laughs> Well, how does she behave? Is she bossy and kicking, or is she pulling? Is she, you know, it, the trail can make a different dynamic because you also have all of the riders on there too. If it's just the horses, they usually figure it out, and sometimes that can lead to bumps and bruises, but um, a lot of times it depends on the rider. If your horse is is there one more there? I thought I saw one pop up, but that looks like the same. So does that answer that, Janice? It, it, the, the answer is it depends. <laughs> it can depend on so many other different things. Who else is riding, levels of rider, type of trail, how she is on the trail as well, because that can be completely different when she's in a very comfortable position out in the paddock and she's the boss mare, might change depending on her level of experience on the trail. <laughs> okay, she's giving signals to them and noises. Is this out on the trail or is this out in the paddock? Or both? And of course, go back to the first one, you have, you need to have her attention as well. Okay, out on the trail. Now, is that causing trouble or is that just keeping them calm? Because sometimes a horse, a good solid horse that has the confidence and calmness can be helpful. But if that horse is causing problems with those signals, then you need to go back to you and your relationship with your horse and getting the focus and attention on what you're asking them to do or not to do. Does that make sense? Um, oh, so some other little things, just even if you stop at, you know, at a water stop, everybody wait until the last horse is done drinking, because a lot of times that can cause an unnecessary spook or, or fear, because some horses, if they, if they're not done drinking, they feel like they're going to get left behind, um, that can cause, cause an unnecessary spook, and also, I'm sure everybody's familiar with the horses that really know their way home. Uh, you can actually kind of refocus attention, asking them to do some different movements and and start, stop, uh, shoulder in, whatever types of movements, just to give them or or take some different ride uh, home if you can. Certainly, or a different direction. Certainly, have reflective wear. Okay, make sure your tack, all of your tack is in good shape and that you are, you and your horse are both prepared physically and <laughs> mentally as well. Um, what else? Anything else that you can think of? Yeah, so don't, don't start out big, start out small and build the confidence, your, your own confidence with your horse and also um, your horse's confidence trying to think is there anything else that we have anything else you guys can think of there's a lot of uh, trail riding is is really fun when you're prepared oh and of course obviously a helmets your best option a, a lot of people don't wear helmets but a helmet will have high potential of keeping you uh, 
safer if something does happen if you hit your head that let that helmet absorb it okay um, hmm. cell phone oh keep oh one good point that somebody was mentioning if you have a cell phone don't tie it to your saddle because what happens if you get dumped <laughs> your horse takes off you have no cell phone so how do you stop a runaway horse good books on recommending per trail riding um, one thing that I uh, okay so runaway horse if if you can get the rest of the horses <clears throat> to stop more often than not that horse is not going to unless it's running back to the barn or, or something a lot of times that horse will either come back or stay try to stay closer to the crowd um, and, and that all of, all of that depends on the situation who you have as far as riders and levels of uh, horses and riders experience but it's much better to have not to try galloping after the horse because then you're just amplifying but if you can try and keep the horses close together often that horse was not going to go far um, the Qu American Quarter Horse Association has something I, I was looking at it um, the other day where you can actually download a trail riding guide I think w and we also have <laughs> another great option here that you're going to hear about in a second uh, Gwen do you want to talk about that Gwen, are you with us? Yep. I am, but you cut out for a second for me. <clears throat> Can you say that one more time? Oh, I was saying that there's there's something they were asking for some uh, trail riding information. Is Aha. there something that we have? Uh oh. <laughs> well, yes, we do. So let me. I'm gonna skip ahead, maybe. <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit because I've got a slide that describes us towards the end. So let me. Yep. Yeah. Just go right yeah, well, here. There you second. go. Oops, you passed it. There we go. So we have <laughs> from My Horse University a short course. It's a self-paced online course on trail riding. And there's several modules uh, throughout the course in terms of uh, getting your horse prepared to go on the trails and when you're out on the trails themselves and things like that. And there's a recorded webinar um, within the course as well. And if you complete the course, we will actually mail you a printed uh, cert certificate showing that you have completed the course. And typically we sell this course for $25. Um, however, since all of you have joined us for this webinar tonight and spent the time here um, with a webinar when you probably could be out trail riding yourself, we'd love to give you <laughs> free access to the course. And so here's some instructions right here. Um, you would just go to our website and find the Trail Riding 101 course and um, go to our registration system. Um, you do have to log into the registration in order to use the discount code to get it for free. And the discount code is just T-R-F-R-E-E. -E. So you would just type that in um, as a discount code and then um, click on Submit and you will get immediate access to the course. Um, I know all of you may not be able to write this down right away or anything like that. So, um, of course, the recording of this webcast, we will put that up online on the website tomorrow. Or if you just email us at info at myhorseuniversity.com, uh, we can just send you step-by-step -step instructions. And just let us know that you attended the webinar and would like access to the free course. So, once again, yeah. kind of go right here or just email us at info at myhorseuniversity.com. That's pretty handy, huh? <laughs> and I think if you want to back up a few slides and talk about feedback, you're welcome to sure. do that as well. Okay. Um, well, uh, of course, we, and I know we have some repeat people on these uh, webinars, and um, we always ask for a little bit of feedback. And this feedback is really important to us as uh, we plan ahead for um, future webinars that we might have, future topics and so forth. And I'm actually going to put um, a copy of this URL, even though it's on the screen, I'm going to put it here in the chat so you can just click on it directly. Um, and the web or the survey, excuse me, should just take a few minutes for you to complete. It's not really long. Um, we'll also send you a reminder in a couple days just in case maybe you didn't have time to do it um, this evening. But we really would appreciate your feedback.
Um, this is the last of our webinars uh, for the spring. So we typically don't hold webinars in June, July, and August because we know everyone's out busy riding, hanging out with their horses. So we will have our next webinar um, in September and we'll be sending out information about that topic and all the details um, about it um, in August. So I guess we can go back and ask if there's any other questions. Sure. There we go. And hopefully this has been helpful because a lot of times it's just a refresher, just reminding us what we need to be thinking about to make our riding more enjoyable for both horse and rider. All right. Well, if we don't have any questions popping in, uh, Chris Skelly did put up a... Uh, a link to a CHA emergency stop video um, in the chat as well. It looks like we might have one question here. Okay, well I see that how can I begin to educate some of the drivers? And you have, if you actually just so are, are you talking about folks that you actually know or just trying to get in general? I mean, like as I was mentioning before, that public service announcement is something that's available to be put to sent to any radio or TV station or radio station for that matter because we did the voiceover so that the TV did not or the visuals did not have to be there. Um, and so trying to get that, it's it's on in seven states, I think, now for folks that have sent me the information but um, that would be one way the other way is to make sure that you're okay you live in Pennsylvania I'm not sure if we've sent it but if you I don't know if, if my email is actually on here but certainly the info at uh, my horse you can find my email as well and if you want to ask me uh, how to get it on to your local stations. I can provide it. I can't guarantee they'll play it, but uh, I can provide that information. You can also find that on YouTube just searching for National Horse um, Horse Safety PSA and you can share it on Facebook and Twitter and this and that. That's one way as well using the social media. So there's a couple of different ways you can share it or you can try you can contact me and we can try and get it to the right people at your local stations. Okay, it looks like we have a couple people maybe asking a question or maybe have a comment. And it looks like Mark uh, raised his hand. So Mark, if you've got a question, go ahead and um, type it down there in the chat. Okay, it looks like Chris put the uh, link to the PSA. And you're free to copy and paste that link and share it everywhere and every how. And put it on websites, put it in uh, in social media, send it. Uh, we're actually trying to get information our, working with our driver's ed folks. That's another thing in Vermont. So. Um, you know, get get that so that they're using that as training for the young drivers as well. You use a pool noodle. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know how that would work with some of the horses I've ridden. <laughs> but but remember it's it's up to all of us, the drivers and the riders, to try and work together. And and certainly if there's somebody that is a repeat offender for you know, putting riders in dangerous positions, you certainly can catch a license plate and let your local police know. Okay, local or state, whichever. And, and you can actually look, also you can look up and find out what the exact laws in your state are regarding horses on the road. 
Uh, most of the time it favors the horse, as I said, but you can become aware of that so that you can also uh, educate folks there. But again, educate them to try and help rather than preach. Because they wanted, originally it was, you must stop. It's the law. And I, I work to say, hey, let's go with the be proactive for all of us. Yeah, I, I've seen some of those things as well with the Amish um, or any, you know, right, cars doing things that they shouldn't be doing, trying to spook the horses. They don't know what they're, what kind of danger they're putting their riders and horses in. Excellent. Well, it sounds like everybody's on the right track, and I hope that you've enjoyed our little chat and maybe gave you some more things to think about and try and work with on your horses. All right. Well, I'll just add, um, just make sure everyone on the um, webinar this evening to make sure to just email us if you want access to the course. And also, if you're not on our mailing list, make sure to let us know that as well, and we can easily add you to our list so you can find out about our webinars that we're going to be having next fall. And uh, like I mentioned, the recording from this evening will be up tomorrow, so you can always come back and check it out then. So once again, thank you to Betsy. Uh, thank you to uh, Dr. Chris Skelly for helping with some of the questions in here as well. And thank you to all of you for taking the time to uh, spend some time with us this evening and talk about this really important topic. Okay, so we're good to go? Good to go. Thanks, Betsy. All right. All right, you bet. You guys all have a great evening and a great